This is a 1950s, don't have a date on it yet, Zenith AM FM clock radio. And uh, just picked this up. Uh, don't know what it needs, don't know anything about it, don't know if it works. Uh, either way, it's going to get serviced. So let's dig into it and just see what's going on with it. Usually, the and, you know, it's Telecron, that's awesome. Usually, uh, the clocks don't work in these, but they're like a shaded pole motor, so we'll see if that works. Uh, let's find out uh, what's going on with this thing. I'm guessing this is a receptacle for appliance, not over 1,100 watts. It's interesting. So is this the idea behind this, that you, you use this in your kitchen, that this was a kitchen set? Is that why that's like that? It's got all the screws in it except for this one. It's interesting. It doesn't have those those push-in clips. It's actually got screws in it. Uh, there is a crack in the case right here that I can repair pretty easily. Uh, I think there was another one. I thought I saw one down there when I un unpackaged it. It's got the FM coupled power cord, line cord coupled uh, antenna there hooked to the right place. A lot of times I see that hooked to the ground on these when I tear into them. Let's see what's inside. I see a lot of replacement tubes. There's an RCA. It's probably the audio output tube. I'm sure it got dropped by FedEx when it got delivered. Um, typical. Typical. That looks like a 19... This is a 19T8, and it's missing the tube shield. 12AT7. GE tube. It's probably got a 19T8 in it somewhere as a FM detector, but every one of these has been replaced, it looks like. This is a Zenith tube, I can tell by the text on it, so maybe one tube hasn't been replaced. This thing's probably got a zillion hours on it then. So the chassis is a 7Y, 7Y03Z, so I can pull the SAMs on that. Let's see, this is interesting, why has it got four... Oh, because one of them comes up, you have it come in and out. Is that why that is that way? So you've got power coming out here. And I guess the reason they have that there is because it probably feeds the clock. So, interesting. Let's plug it in. Hmm. Oh, well. That bit the dust. That sucks. Turned it and it just turned to powder. Well, I don't want to destroy that one too. It's it might be too difficult to turn, so we'll just use a screwdriver. Just probably needs to be lubed. So the plastic just got completely taken out because this thing is too hard to turn. I don't know, is that off? Well, anyways, who knows? We'll start with a 60-watt light bulb. And, oh, <laughs> let me unplug this. That's that Philco, it's still here. Oh, there we go. That looked like filaments to me. So that's the power switch for the radio however that works and then this must be volume that feels like tuning and the tuning dial string is obviously broken and AM FM well it's a zenith of course it works Sounds all distorted, just like a Zenith with a 19T8 sounds. I talked to the phone. Well, we have AM and FM.
the clock doesn't work we'll have to fix that hopefully the motor windings not burned up in it okay well we know we got a candidate for restoration this is all this discoloring here that's because somebody smoked around this for a hundred years so i did confirm this is 1956 so that's about right that's 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 the era where you see the slug tuned uh, if and it's where you see these bakelite or plastic whatever they are i don't think these are these might be a different kind of plastic um it's just there was a million of these made millions and millions of these made and a lot of different companies made them the atomic gauge look they're neat I, uh, i've got a lot of these different ones uh, so anyways it doesn't appear that there's anything wrong with this one so you know maybe we just do a service on it it's kind of fun to take a look and see what these look like under the hood It's the only station that has anything worth listening to on it and even then it sucks so i get the feeling that this thing has had a ton of work done to it just by the number of tubes it's got all the tubes have been changed i think maybe this might be a zenith tube right here and the if tubes last the longest yeah that's a zenith tube i can tell um yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed it works at all. But anyways, this is one of those ones where it's a real pain in the ass. You can't... The speaker isn't attached to the chassis for whatever reason. I don't know why Zenith did this this way. A lot of their other ones, you just take the whole thing. It comes out, that speaker and the tra audio output transfer. Well, on this one, it's on here. But it, it comes out as a whole unit. This thing, there's no way to unplug the freaking clock from it. So you got to leave the... Anyways, I'll stop complaining. It's still... It's a Zenith and it's it's quality. So it's also one of those ones that they put the shield on the bottom of the chassis. So you have to take that off of there. Um, so we'll get inside of it. Yeah, I get the feeling that it hasn't had much work done uh, as far as capacitor upgrades just because I see a wax cap up top. So it probably hasn't been touched in a long time, but it's probably had a bunch of work done to it over the years. Somebody got their, uh, somebody got their use out of this thing for sure. It's also got the uh, sticky wire stuff going on. That seems to be real common with this 50s and 60s stuff these days. Uh, this is one of those jobs you wish you didn't take. It's every radio repairer's nightmare is having to do a dial cord. and Yeah, the dial cord is, well, it's, it's shot. So that's fine. I uh, have dial cord. It's just anybody that's ever worked on one of these taking the same size as I am right now. They just suck. Um, these might be mica. They might be paper. These kind of look like mica. And knowing Zenith, they probably are. It's got a bunch of disc caps and combination disc caps in it. I think that's what some of these are. The ones that have three leads. They're not integrators like a TV, but they do have multiple. They have like two caps in one. I've seen those before. Um, Pretty simple, though. You know, there's less in here than I expected for an AM, FM. And I've worked on ones of this era. It's probably the same circuit as a lot of the ones I've worked on. Um, it's interesting. It's usually the FM on these has three slugs. And this only has two. Uh, so that's different. We've got ceramic, uh, tubular ceramic capacitor there. There might be a couple of those in here then. Sometimes those go bad. Um... I've never seen one go bad, but Shango has. Just a couple of waxies in here. You know, this really isn't going to need much. I'm debating whether I, I, I could probably do the uh, filter. It uh, looks like a three section to me. I just picked up at the uh, ham swap meet a bunch of Rubicon caps for next to nothing. So it's just, just getting a service. There really isn't a whole lot to share here, but it's fun to take a look at these sometimes and see how they're set up. Uh, you know, this is very typical of this era where you have the safety plug here, you know, where you can't have it plugged in and work on it unless you plug it in, which is silly to me because that's exactly what you do is just plug it into it or put a cheater cord on here. Um, I'm not going to go through the trouble of disconnecting all this. I can service it like this. It's not the most ideal, but it's doable. So let's uh, go through and replace some of the wax caps. We know it works now, so when it doesn't work when we get done, we'll know that it's my fault. Well, that's interesting. I love it when I change four caps and it doesn't work. I got noise. 
audio output, but there's no AM, no FM. What did I do? It's actually kind of fun this way. I mean, what fun is just a recap? It's just boring. It's, these things are boring. TVs are a little bit more fun because there's usually something wrong with them. But all right, what did I jack up? Play clip number four because it's very revealing. And of course, it was my fault. I had moved this resistor out of the way to change this cap, and this was touching right here onto the uh, IF. So it was shunting the IF off through the antenna. Uh, this little doorknob capacitor or whatever it is, or isolator, this isolator that comes through the chassis. So, simple, simple, simple. So, you know, we got to fix the dial string. And maybe we're going to do an alignment. I'm going to do an FM sweep on this and kind of uh, see how it performs. We'll check the AM. As This is AM. Let's see. If we can get 1260 on here, then I'm not going to align the AM. Maybe, I, you know, if it's weak, maybe I will, but... Uh, so uh, FM, if, as long as the FM doesn't have any double humps and it's receiving relatively well, we're going to leave it alone. So there's 1260 and that's awesome. That alignment's good. It sounds like every other radio, so that, that I run here. Let's check the FM out, huh? I hear distortion, hear like wah wah sound. Could have been. This doesn't have AFC either, so. Its performance is going to be lackluster at the best. Without AFC, it's it's going to drift. But these 50 Zeniths, they're pretty good. I've got a few of these. I actually have more than a few of these. I've restored more than a few of these. Um, by the way, the filter is staying cool, and it's fine. I, I just leave it alone. You know, I've changed these filters before, and it's a big pain in the ass. You cause more damage changing them than you do leaving them. If the filter ever goes bad, I can always they can send it back to me, and I can repair it unless they want me to do it. But anyways... Um, uh, the not having AFC, these things do drift, but once they warm up, they're pretty decent. Uh, it's a Zenith. They work pretty good. They got good components in them for the most part. I, I never really, have, I don't know that I've ever had to change a resistor on a Zenith before. Well, that's a lie. I've had ones that are open before, but I've never had one drift so badly that it screwed things up. They're either open or they work, you know, they're within 20 or 25 percent. So we'll just continue to kind of go through here, and if I need to do an FM alignment on it, we'll go ahead and show that. Okay, so we do see uh, one problem here. I'm down towards the bottom of, actually just about the bottom of the dial, and this is uh, KUSC or K University of Spoiled Children, um, and it's classical station. It's 97.1, and I have like pretty much no travel left so that's what 89 that's probably kcrw right there it should go down to 88.5 and it's not so what we have to do is one of these two and i forget which you know one it is or i don't forget actually oh this is missing a tube shield listen to that see that's why you need that tube shield and it's missing maybe i can dig one of those up um you can adjust the oscillator the fm oscillator speed here um, so, you know, let's just, yeah, that's it. So let's put this at the bottom of the dial. So that's going back up towards it. Let's see. There's, uh, listen to that. That's K Jazz. Now, if K Jazz sounds that good and it's clear, I'm not going to touch the alignment on this thing because K Jazz is like a four or five thousand watt transmitter down in Long Beach, and that's a good 35 miles from here. Um, 
these a lot of times this older fm stuff i've got other fm receivers that just don't get it don't get k jazz so if that's coming in that clean we're not going to touch the alignment that means it doesn't have silver mica disease it means it's spot on i tell you that so anyways that's the very bottom of the dial right there i think k jazz is 80 i forget 88 9 something like that so we'll adjust it down just a little bit further we were on track for thank you for that let's see i went the wrong way i knew there wasn't that many channel stations that's the last station that's 88.5 if we go a little bit further we should get that is um let's see Yeah, we're not going to pick it up, not with this receiver. It should be um, Radio Guadalupe TV. There's a little bit of bleed over there. That's both stations right there. The discriminator might need a little bit of adjustment. It's pretty good, though. So I want to leave it, like, right there. So now, that's pretty damn good. I, I shock K Jazz is coming in so clean. So that means that we're uh, it means we're in good shape here. Is what that means. I think I'm not going to screw with it. I think this is this is a wrap. Well, for the radio side of it. Now, we got to get that Telecron motor working, and if it's not burned up, I'll get it working because I've fixed many of those before. So, we got to pull that out next and see what's going on with that. Get that control lubed up because that thing's stiffer than. Well, it's stiff. I had a kid ask me the other day why I was listening to oldies, I was listening to the offspring. That made me feel terrible. Um, there's the 19T8, by the way. And these things, Zenith used the hell out of those. I think every FM receiver that I have that's a Zenith has got a 19T8 in it. And every single one of them is distorted except for this one. And uh, the uh, the last one of these AM FMs we worked on, that, that one that I completely restored. I don't know, it was a few videos back now. Um this thing works really good. That's K Rock, which is kind of weak here to a certain extent. Um, so, you know, zero problems with this. You know, I expect that, though. This is a freaking zenith. You know, these things just freaking work. You know, it, it can have half the components are bad in them and they work. Um, but we do want to service it because, uh, you know, it's, it's going to a customer and it's got to be, you know, tits up. So let's work on getting that clock radio out of there. Or clock radio. Boy, that's real bright. That clock out of there. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever worked on one of these before, but they're really interesting. Uh, these motors run forever, virtually, if they're cared for and they're not left in a bad environment. This is actually the motor here. So the, the winding is here. This is, this is the stator for the motor. And... It's inductive in the motor. All the guts and everything that move inside of it are inside of here right now. So you can, in, right now, I'm just messed up today, apparently. Um, so you can actually take this apart and take this motor out of here and replace this, and you actually keep the winding. It's back in the days when things were serviceable. Is that even a word anymore? Uh, you know, you didn't just throw the whole thing away. You could actually replace part of this. Uh, so uh, what I've found with these over the years in the clocks that I've, dealt with you can actually take this apart take this out of here and you can actually use some like synthetic motor oil and put it up on the pinion at the seal there and you can heat this with like a soldering iron and it'll get warm and then you let it cool off and it'll suck that oil in there and you can actually get some good synthetic motor oil inside of it uh, we also need to deal with this stuff this this is so stiff that's why that knob broke when i went to turn it um i need to get this lubed up with some grease maybe clean this up a little bit you can't really clean these dials uh the second that you do they're silk screened and it'll actually melt the crap off of them so this all right here is like 
cigarette smoke tar or glaze and uh, we you know can't really clean that up but what we can do is take this out of here and typical of zenith this is glass philco 30 years before this philco would have been plastic yeah, just about everybody would have been plastic not zenith though so look at how gross that is i mean i'll clean right up you know we'll get all that tar off of there yeah smoker set but what wasn't a smoker set back in the 50s everybody smoked philip morris the big uh philip morris was the big sponsor for i love lucy which 1956 what was everybody watching i love lucy so anyways let's get it uh get that cleaned up uh we'll see if this is froze up in here if it is we'll disassemble this and and get it lubed up see if we can get it moving so some very rudimentary troubleshooting here so we can see it's not moving and uh you know, obviously it's, there's no gears moving here how we know that it's getting power and that there's magnetism going you know induction going into this motor is my screwdriver will stick to this and it does i can feel it and i can feel it humming i can feel the 60 cycle hum here so we know that there's something going on with this motor in here so the, the question is going to be whether you know it's just jammed up or whether it's burned up inside these things do have a tendency to fail uh, they are available there is people that rebuild them I don't but um, I have fiddled around with them gotten them to work before so uh, what I'm gonna do here is take the motor out of it and see if we can get some lube in there see if we can get it to turn uh, if not we might be searching for one of those because the uh, person that's getting this radio uh, wants the clock to work let's see if I can show this See how it's bubbling? That's the air coming out of it as I heat it. And as I let it cool off, it's going to suck that oil down. Now I'm using something a little thinner right now, some PTFE stuff, just because it might be froze up. So I want something a little thinner that might creep in there. But that's the air coming out of it. Now as it cools down, it's going to suck that down inside. And hopefully we can get this working. If the coil inside of it is is whacked then it won't do anything but see the liquid's gone now it went back down inside of it so we'll do that a few times we'll put some on there heat it up cool it down and uh, get, see if we can get it to loosen up amazing what a little heat and lubrication will do these motors are practically unkillable i mean they run forever i've got a ge clock that's got a telecron motor in it even though it's ge they, it just runs forever. They, I mean, there's really nothing to fail in them. You know, there's there's gears that move extremely slow. It's three point six RPM, which you know that makes doesn't that make sense? Thirty six hundred seconds. Um, so you know, they just take a little bit of care is all. And this one's relatively quiet too as it's moving, which means that it's in really good shape. Sometimes these things can get quite noisy. They'll still work and they'll still keep good time. But so. We might just put a little bit of lubrication on the on the gears there, and I think that that clock is is ready to rock. Bye -bye. This thing works good for not having AFC. Um, you know, the uh, AFC was such a huge improvement in the 50s. You know, Zenith had a lot of FM radios because Zenith is the one that developed FM. And as a matter of fact, I've got a 1946 Zenith. It's the very first AM FM Zenith. It's got the 45 band on it as well, which is pre-World War II. That thing needs a bunch of work, and someday we'll get into that. The IF cans are bad on it. I'm looking for a donor chassis for that too, by the way, in case anybody has one. An 8H034 or 034Z or 8H023. I'm looking for one of those because um, I need to tear the IF cans apart, and I want parts. Uh, so anyways, this thing works good. This is probably going to wrap this one up. Uh, it's nice to give a few tips on getting these Telecron motors working. Um, they, they usually are pretty indestructible. They're not bad most of the time uh, when, when they don't work. It's just they need a little TLC. So that'll wrap this one up. In, in case there's anything else I run into, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tack it on to the end of this segment. But otherwise, we're just going to reassemble it. We're going to clean this up, get some of this cigarette glaze off of here. Um, you know, just give it... Give it a little bit of TLC.
just a couple of things. Uh, did repair the dial string. This is actually one of the easier ones I've done, and I didn't feel like downloading the schematic to see how it works, so I just I could kind of deduce how this needed to go. This is a more simple one. Uh, so we did that. The other thing I noticed too, this should probably have a selenium rectifier, and it doesn't. And I did notice that somebody put a silicon diode in it at some point, so uh, the selenium probably bit the dust at some point in its life, so that's another thing that we didn't need to do. Uh, I'm going to take the speaker out of the cabinet and I'm going to clean this. It's all plastic. There's no speaker cloth in it or anything. So I'm going to actually take it to the sink and get some soap and a scrub brush and uh, very carefully clean this. And then we can throw some glue in here and fix the cracks in the case. And uh, it'll be a little bit more spiffy that way. Just uh, kind of reassembling this now. I did clean the glass. I'm using some double-sided tape, some small little pieces there the same stuff I use for doing cataracts on TVs and uh, that had some kind of some kind of black tar or something that had that stuck in place originally it just fell apart when I pulled it out so I cleaned all that up when I cleaned this and double side tape will work good put some CA glue in there it's too bad that this is cracked like this somebody tightened this too hard and that's why that broke um, but other than that, the paint on it looks pretty good, so we're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to glue it and clamp it for a little bit here. Um, so real close to putting this back in the case here. By the way, uh, this is, uh, I forgot to mention this. This is what this looks like after all the cigarette tar has been cleaned off of it. I just use some 409. Simple green works good too. It won't damage anything. Aside from a few blemishes in the paint, it's actually in really nice shape. The, both the dials for the clock and the, the radio, the, the white really popped once I got all that crap out of there. It was just it was just brown when I scrubbed it. And here it is all back together. Just turned it back on here. We'll test it out. I still I gotta clean these knobs and I gotta fix this one. I think maybe what I'll do with this is I'll put some kind of a wax or something on here and then I'll put some epoxy putty in here or maybe regular epoxy and that'll uh, make it like a release agent uh, so it'll put some teeth back in there uh, we'll try it not super critical though because who's going to use the sleep timer on this thing I don't think anybody will but uh, you know you really just need this to work for power so let's see is it make sure I got this on in the right position here might not have. Did we kill it? No, there it goes. I had it off. So, it works pretty good. So, we're going to run it in for a couple of days. Uh, it's always good to do that. Uh, see if the filter fails. I really probably should replace the filter in it, but you know, it's probably fine. Those aluminum can ones, they usually don't go bad. So. It works really well. It sounds good, and it's really not. There's a slight bit of distortion with the 19T8 in this one, but some of them are really bad. Maybe it's just the way they're aligned. But it works. It sounds really good. It's a lot of stations. It's, of course, here, there's a lot of stations. There, there's today's oldies station, K Rock. Yeah. If I think about it, though, when I was a kid, you know, 50s were oldies when I was a kid. And if I think about it now, the music of my childhood and teenage years is as old as that was at the time. So I guess it is oldies. And, you know, time gets away from you. 
Pretty neat I didn't have to align this thing. I just I can just tell by how well it works. Anyways, that's a uh, 1956 Zenith clock radio uh, with the Telecron clock. Those are really neat. That came out nice. The dial still looks pretty good. It hides that tar crap that was on there, probably from the old seal that was on there, or the cigarette glaze, probably a combination of both. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate it's got this crack in it, although I hit it pretty well by, by repairing it. I don't really want to repaint this whole thing because... There's a silver on here with the white lettering. You know, I probably could mask it off and try and match the paint, but I'd probably do it a disservice. It's in good enough shape. It really looks really looks very good for its age. So we'll we'll leave it there. All right, that's a wrap on this one. It's just a kind of a show and tell and service.